Hey, True Believers, England team here, and I have no idea why I'm red when I've got a green screen up. Anyway, uh, we're going to be doing another batch of new comic book reviews. The Galar continues, and yes, I'm riding this pony out every week. we got to talk about this thing. Now, this time around, we're doing X-Factor number 20 from DC Comics. We've got The Flash 770 and, I believe, Suicide Squad number 3. And also from Independence, something Marjorie, something or other, time criminal? What's the thing? Oh, here it is. Marjorie Finnegan, temporal crime, temporal, I can't speak, so why don't, you know, you know what, sit back, relax, let's get this party started. All right, this time I'm going to talk about the cover. I didn't talk about the covers too much with the uh, with the other one. What was that? Um, Hel not Hellions, Marauders. Hellions is next. So, yeah, I'm still not a big fan. At least X-Force is okay, except for could somebody please take that idiotic helmet off of Professor X's head and give him back his dignity? That is absolutely a crime. Come on, people. What could they possibly be thinking there? Everybody else looks good, though. Now, we also have this cover here with Kitty Pride, and that one's not good either. It's like, uh, it's unfinished. It's like she couldn't figure out how she wanted to dress and decided to just throw everything together. And I'm sorry, gang, it just doesn't make it. And this is pretty stupid as well. I'm sorry, it just is. But then again, I think there's a lot about Emma Frost that's stupid, including why does she have a diamond power? Honestly, I, I, because she's had it. No, no, no. She had, didn't have it since the beginning. They added it on, and it was dumb when they added it. It just doesn't make sense. It's a secondary mutation from psychic. I don't know. I don't know. But the, the clothing, the outfit right here is not very good either. So let's get on to the story. Oh, whoops. I, I forgot about cover A. Seriously. This is the gala thing. I'm now granted this tells you a little bit about what's going on in the comic book because at least then it's like, hey, these guys are security and it's showing that on this cover. So while it doesn't highlight the outfits like that stupid uh, preview did, at least it's telling us what to expect inside the book. And in this issue, we get a little bit more of the conversation between uh, what's his name here, the douchebag, nobody likes uh, mentalist guy as he's talking to Tony Stark, and Tony Stark is just really not having any of it, and I kind of dig that about him. Look, one of the reasons I'm liking this book is it seems like everybody in the Marvel Universe has accepted the fact that the X-Men are villains, and I want to see them treated like the villains that they are. One of my problems going into this, uh, and uh, by that I mean the, the Hickman run of X-Men, was that they were villains and yet they weren't seen that way, or at least they were trying to pass them off as still heroes. I'm sorry, no, I don't see that, but we are getting that here. So basically what we're getting in, in the X-Force issue is finding out that the X-Force is absolutely the security team. They're securing everything, but then we see that Beast has ulterior motives and that he's using this to plant, well, plants that will then act as uh, surveillance devices so the x-men can spy on all different nations all different countries ladies and gentlemen they are in fact the villains of the marvel universe i am not in any shape or form kidding that's what's going on here the beast has a plan and they everybody's going along with it that makes it so they can keep an eye on every other nation. And I think that so long as it's treated, here it is, here it is, here's the scene, just look at that. It's so long as this is treated like the villainy it is, and judging by the end of, um, of uh, what was it, uh, X-Force or whatever the first one was, Marauders, I think it will be because a lot of people are like, what the heck did we just see? What the heck are you just doing? This is Beast's argument. Basically, he's like, well, if it was God coming down and he offered to help you, uh, you'd be kneeling and yelling, you know, praising and all that kind of stuff. So why should I be any different? You know, not. And that just tells us that Beast now thinks that he's above people. I never knew Beast thought that way. But then again, I haven't read the X-Men in any kind of regularity for about 20 years. Oh, and then Deadpool crashes the party. And that's when things get really kind of fun. I don't know if I would say that issue is better than the Marauders issue. By the way, I can't remember it was Marauders. Uh, but I, I still kind of liked it. I'm still enjoying the Hellfire Gala. But only, once again, 
as long as they're treating the the mutants like the villains that they are. Alrighty, so let's get to Flash 770, and in the meantime, I'm going to turn on the light. Maybe I'll stop being so red. I honestly don't know what they're trying to depict with this, <laughs> seriously. Um, that being said, I like the colors on it, at the very least. The art's good, it's just, uh, and at some point in time, Jay Garrick is, uh, is chained up in a Nazi dungeon. In the issue, however, we get the president, uh, Eisenhower, I believe it is, who says uh, to the Ray and Jay Garrick, hey, we want you to go, or is this FDR? Um, that's FDR. Okay, so he's like, hey, we want you to uh, go over and we want you to take out a Nazi scientist. <laughs> Basically, that's it. They, they want these two guys to go take out a Nazi scientist. And that's the story, except for somewhere along the lines, Wally West kind of uh, takes over the body of Jay Garrick. And one thing I, I, I didn't know the Ray was played so serious. He is played uh, serious here. He's the straight man. And Jay Garrick, even before he's taken over by Wally West, is kind of the jokester of the group, or at least he's definitely more lighthearted. Um, I like this story. This is a very good story, by the way. Oh, The Spear of Destiny, that was it. Sorry, I read this book a while back. And I uh, never got around to doing the review, so I figured I'd throw it in here. So I was like, wait a second, I forgot a little bit about it. I Yeah, but I'm, I'm telling you right here and right now, this is just a fun book, which I'm glad because DC has been falling to me. And I've been dropping book after book after book. Uh, goodness gracious, uh, Crime Syndicate, Suicide Squad, Batman, and this. Um, not Batman, but um, Batman Detective. So there are some good, and this is one of them. Very entertaining, very fun and funny kind of story. As uh, Wally West is trying to let the Ray in on enough information that he needs while the Ray knows there's something going on. A lot of the wit and the humor stems from the dialogue. The action is there, so you know there's a lot of visual. There's a lot of things to look at as well. And uh, yes, there, if you haven't been picking up The Flash, this may be one of the only DCs I could recommend. That is so sad to me because I'm a DC fiend. Um, but hey, if they're going to write the characters poorly, you can't recommend it, right? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out something different. Either way, if you want a good story, so far so good on this uh, Wally West time travel thing that's going on. Speaking of time travel, Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. Number one, written by Garth Ennis. You know what? I, I just saw Upshot number one, and I thought, you know what? I've been liking dang near every book these guys do. I'm going to check this out. Just based on I didn't care. I saw the title. I, I saw that it was the first issue. Let's give it a shot. Maybe you'll like it. And when I got it home and I started to read it, I saw the name Garth Ennis. I went, uh-oh. I remember when Garth Ennis would have made me go, oh, cool, all right, yeah, let's check this out. But did you know Garth Ennis is edgy? You know he writes edgy? Because if you didn't know Garth Ennis writes edgy, Garth Ennis will tell you he writes edgy every chance he gets. Oh, my Lord in heaven. This book is, this book is what I would have written at 15 or 16. So I could appear edgy. Seriously, it was, oh my gosh, look, ha, 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 I did this or I did that. And it just, uh, I don't know, it's, it falls flat to me. I'm, I was hoping it would get better, but actually as it went along, it got worse. Though I'm not interested in Marjorie Finnegan. I'm interested in this cowboy sheriff, temporal sheriff person who actually turns out to be Marjorie's sister. Um, oh, spoiler alert. It's not really a spoiler. There's not much of a story here. Um, but I thought she was a much more interesting character. Let's follow her. This one, no, she's there so Garth Ennis could write something edgy. That's all. And unfortunately, this one fails. I, I, I don't know. I don't know when the last time I liked a Garth Ennis story was. The art at times is good. The art at times is bad. There are some faces, not here. I think there that this is one of the good ones, but there are sometimes the faces just seem off a little bit. So, and that's one of the problems. This book is so inconsistent, except for when it comes to like the dialogue from Garth Ennis. It's just so freaking 
bad. It really is. It's so bad. I wanted to like this, guys, because once again, uh, Upshot so far has not really steered me wrong. But then again, I didn't know they hired Garth Ennis. Suicide Squad number three. Now, this is one that goes from Suicide Squad to Teen Titans to Suicide Squad. So, unfortunately, this is a bit of a crossover. And this is issue number three, Suicide Squad, where they are sent out to capture a young lady superhero. That's their mission. That's their job. And uh, Waller is... Waller... I don't know. Waller's too Waller. Like, I get it. Do what I say or that kind of thing but I don't know a lot of writers kind of flex that muscle a little bit too much and a lot of times I don't know if they mean to do it or if they if they're they're trying to write the heroes as or the villains as tough you know well if she does this I'll, I'll, I'll smack the hair off her head you know or something like that I don't know that's not that not a legitimate quote but what I'm saying is they try to toughen up the bad guys talking to her or but it actually seems like they're not taking her serious anymore you know she's she's barking way too much to believe that she'll ever bite and i think they need to show that i think they need to show the bite a little bit more often and i think they need to show waller say fewer things in all honesty she should be a presence but the way they write her now everybody else is actually fun i'm, I'm enjoying the peacemaker in this one as well I think every, all the other characters are fine, um, and the mission is good. I like the setup. I liked how they uh, how they presented the mission is what they need to do versus, of course, how it goes. So everything is is good. Everything is on point except for one of the main characters, and that's the most important thing. I get it. You're you're a badass woman. You know you just don't have to. You don't have to announce it every three seconds. We, we will believe you, Waller. Trust me. We're, we're on your side. We're on your side, guys. So, yeah, other than that, I think the art is fine. I think it works. I love the, uh, I love the looks. They even make the Peacemaker's uh, stupid helmet costume look kind of cool here. I think a lot of good stuff is in here. The, um, so there's a lot to enjoy. And we're only at issue number three, so they've got plenty of time to screw it up if they want, but hopefully they don't, because uh, so far, so good. What we've got going on here, I always like to, uh, to line them up. What was the worst book I read? What was the best book I read? So I line them up worst to best. I guess, obviously, I'm going to go Marjorie, Crime Fighter, or whatever, Time Crime Criminal. Uh, that one, Marjorie Finnegan, Time Criminal or Temporal Criminal. That's the worst. I just thought, man, that dude tried way too freaking hard here. He really did. After that, probably Suicide Squad, just for the way Waller was written in it. Um, otherwise, it's a good book. I actually recommend it. Beyond that, if okay, Flash or... You know what? I'm going to have to go with uh, second place going to the Hellfire Gala. I, I enjoyed it. I think there's a lot to be... Um, said about it so long as they are treating the x-men like the villains a lot of people are not trusting the x-men and the x-men are proving themselves to be villains and so long as the rest of the mcu are in on it i am fine if they start well you know they're heroes because one thing i always hate is like when carol danvers murders tony stark he says i know you're still a hero bull crap bull crap i don't buy into that now they're treating the X, finally treating the X-Men the way they should. Uh, so that gets second place. And first place, I, I have to give it to The Flash. It was just tons of fun. Tons of fun. This week's, while uh, we, we've got three recommends and one no recommend. Um, I, I, I got to say at least the, uh, the, the this week's or this video, I, I should say. I'm not doing only three videos a week or three three reviews a week. But, uh, yeah, this one wasn't as good as the last one. I had four out of four that time. But, eh, what, you know, three out of four, that's still pretty good. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell if you haven't done it already. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till. There's a tip jar over at Ko-Fi. Um, and also comment. Just say something. Say hello if you need to. Uh, comment and hit like that kind of stuff share 
that gets people, uh, the interaction helps the algorithm and maybe actually YouTube will go, hey, maybe we should share this guy. All righty. like, thank everybody who's already done that and to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.